this might be familiar to you. This might be what you think of as Wales. You might be thinking of male voice choirs and beautiful oceans and uh, Welsh cakes and cowl and Welsh rarebit and uh, many other things, many castles and things like that. So this is what a lot of people know Wales as. But did you know that Wales is also a home to fair trade? This is a lot of our different community groups here um, and the activities that fair trade gets on with. I'm going to move this so I don't have to keep, uh, keep looking too much. So Wales is home to the world's first fair trade capital city, which Cardiff gained in 2004. Wales is home to the world's first fair trade province, which the Church in Wales gained in 2015. And in 2008, Wales became the world's first fair trade nation, and we met a series of criteria demonstrating levels of awareness, engagement, and commitment to purchasing fair trade. In 2018, 10 years after this, at Fair Trade Wales, we did some research into how people felt about fair trade nation uh, 10 years after we had met those original criteria, and we found some really interesting things. We found that people felt really proud of being a fair trade nation. They felt it was really important. We found that people felt that it was morally responsible for Wales to be a fair trade nation. We found that people felt that it wasn't the end, that actually the reason you become a fair trade nation is because there's still more to do, and that actually it's a journey, it's a means to an end, it's not an end in and of itself. And we also found that people really felt that being a fair trade nation fitted with their identity of Wales and of Welsh people. And that was something really important, that people felt it really fit with being Welsh. Wales has got a history of agriculture, of artisanal crafts, of industrial labour, and alongside that goes an identity of labour rights, support for unions and cooperatives, and an understanding of the challenges faced by small businesses and craft and farm businesses around the world. We still have a high percentage of small to medium enterprises and agriculture here in Wales. And in the meetings we have with Welsh Government, it is very much farmers and small business representatives that are around that table discussing things with government, which is quite different to what you find in other places where much larger businesses seem to take precedent. We've got fair trade ways, fair trade footballs, Fair trade uh, lollipops, ice lollies, if anyone's interested. We have a fabulous uh, pop cycle who do um, mocktail ice lollies for events, if anyone's interested. They're very good. Um, and we have 30 fair trade communities, eight fair trade shops with many fair trade suppliers, hundreds of schools, and I haven't counted, but I imagine thousands of trade craft reps. <laughs> it's far too many to count. Um, we also, Cardiff, is in the top 10 of Gregged places in the UK. We've got 25 Greg stores in Cardiff, um, which apparently means we're in the top 10. And uh, they do all their fair trade, coffee, tea, hot chocolate, apple juice, orange juice, and have just made a new commitment to cocoa. In 2019, we hosted the, way, um, the International Fair Trade Towns Conference. We had 250 people from 40 countries and six continents come to Wales to celebrate fair trade and talk about the future of fair trade. We had conferences and panels and celebrations, and we also had uh, an interactive zone, and I know I recognize faces from here who were at that conference selling their products or coming to talk about fair trade. Little did we know that that conference would be the last time a lot of us would get together for a long time. Um, and COVID has been really hard. Um, we've lost friends and we've lost family. We've really struggled to maintain our businesses and our partnerships with our producer partners. We've had to learn new ways of doing things. We've been lonely. We've been isolated. And quite frankly, I think a lot of us are really tired. And I just really want to recognize that for us all and say that that's okay. Campaigners are very hard on themselves. In my first week working for Fairtrade Wales, I went to a group and they said, oh, we're so sorry we haven't met, but I had a stroke. And I haven't been able to meet in six months. 
And I imagine that, well, that's not the first time I've been told things like that. And people always apologize to me. I'm paid, I mean, you know, for the voluntary work that they're doing. So this was uh, my COVID experience. Um, <laughs> In Fairtrade Wales, we tried to make sure there was still some fun going on in that first six months. So the banana did a different home, home activity every week. Um, and we had lovely weather, didn't we? We really did. Mm. One criticism generally aimed towards campaigners is that we forget to celebrate the good things happening, that we fail to see positive change going on. And as Hans Rosling says in his book, Factfulness, things can be bad and getting better. And because we're campaigners, we want to promote positive change. We're very good at um, saying the negative things. Um, I was at a friend's birthday recently, and we were in a pancake factory sort of place, and one of them was going to have hazelnuts, chocolate spread, you may have heard of. And I said, oh, I read a fascinating article about hazelnuts. And she looked at me and said, are you going to tell me the awful supply chain of hazelnuts because it's my birthday and you really shouldn't do that? <laughs> and um, so what I'm going to do now is hopefully look at some hope. Um, how is fair trade embedded in Wales? You might recognise these. These are the sustainable development goals. In fair trade, we often talk about number 12, responsible production and consumption, and number 17, partnerships for the goals. But they're all very important. Did you know that the principle of sustainable development was incorporated into the Welsh Assembly from the beginning of devolution when it was first voted for before the millennium? So in Wales, there is a legal responsibility for the politicians to incorporate sustainable development in the way that they think and what they do. In 2015, when these came about, this was further strengthened by something called the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. This turns the 17 goals of the Sustainable Development Goals into legislation in Wales. It was the first place in the world to actually legislate that those goals needed to be met through these lovely seven wellbeing goals we have here. The top one, the blue one there, is a globally responsible Wales. And that is what a lot of people are talking about now when we think about fair trade, when we're talking to Welsh politicians, we're talking about it being globally responsible. This is the definition of sustainable development that Wales has a responsibility to meet through these goals. There are 44 public bodies that have a legal requirement to make an action plan um, against these goals and show how they're moving towards that. Now, I know a lot of you from here are not from Wales, so you think, oh, well, that's lovely. Well done, you. What's the point of this? Thank you very much. Um, but actually, what we find is that our Celtic nations uh, often lead the way in things that gets picked up across the UK at a later date. For example, in 2011, Wales introduced a 5p charge on plastic bags. And this wasn't introduced in England until 2016, so five years later, after it had been really successful. So we know there's been interest from various members of the Commons and the Lords in this bill and how it's moving forward. Um... I've got plenty of time. I was going to panic then. Okay. So here are some things going on in Wales that we're quite excited about. Number one is the new curriculum. There's a new curriculum in Wales, um, and it has four main goals of what it wants to see young people um, being educated in Wales, ending up as at the end of their educational journey. And one of those is to have ethical and informed citizens of Wales and the world. And it's one of the core four principles of the new curriculum uh, that was being rolled out at the moment. We also have Jennifer's Coffee, which is uh, a new bilingual coffee available uh, in Wales. And this was sponsored by the Welsh Government. Um, and they bought the coffee in originally. They made a commitment in Fairtrade Fortnight 2020. And they said that they were going to buy coffee from Mayak, which is a coffee cooperative in Mount Elgon region of Uganda. Um, and then um, Fairtrade Fortnight finished, and I had to drive Jennifer 
six hours to get as quick as flight as she could because COVID was coming and she was going to be stuck somewhere if she wasn't. Um, and we know that at the beginning of COVID, lots of brands and lots of companies stopped their commitments and didn't pay their customer, didn't pay their suppliers, stopped orders halfway through, things that had already been in production were not made. Well, the Welsh Government kept their commitment and bought that coffee, even though they were not able to sell it through any of their own cafes anymore. And so Jennifer's Coffee is now available in a variety of fair trade and zero waste shops, um, and also available online. And we're really pleased to see that that commitment was kept. The other thing that's happening in Wales, which I'm really pleased about, is that politicians in Wales are beginning to acknowledge the historic role that Wales has played in both slavery and carbon emissions, our industrial past. And um, historically, Wales has always played itself as the victim of colonialism from England. And I'm really pleased to see the beginning of those conversations changing to actually acknowledge that Welsh people were involved in slavery and the slave trade and racism that still happens today. The other exciting thing happening is that we've got a new project in Fair Trade Wales called Trade Justice Wales, and it's looking at new trade deals. You know we've all left the EU, and we now make trade deals by ourselves, and we're trying to make them apparently as quickly as we possibly can. Um, and so we've set up a new project called Trade Justice Wales, and for the first time, the Welsh Government have acknowledged that they're going to start thinking about trade policy through the lens of this Wellbeing of Future Generations Act that I talked to you about earlier. And that means that when they're looking at what they're deciding to promote in trade deals, they're going to be doing it based on equality, based on the environment, um, based on the economy, and based on society. So these are some things to be hopeful about in Wales. Oh, no, there we go. We've also got things to be hopeful about wider than Wales, uh, across the UK. Um, I will get to this bit. I know that not <laughs> you'll all be like, why has she put these things up? Um, so number one, the awareness of fair trade is very high. We've got really high awareness of the basics of fair trade and what that is, and we really need to celebrate that. That hasn't always been the case. We've got 80 to 90% of people, if you ask them what fair trade means, they have a basic understanding, and that's really important and really good. The second thing I'm going to say is we've got lots and lots of different certifications. And most of the time, that is a head-banging experience. But I would like to say, the reason for this is because we've been so successful. And I think it's something to celebrate. 30 years ago, a company would not talk about how they treated people or the planet. And now they feel they have to. And they're fair washing, and they're covering it up, and they're doing it in a variety of ways that we do not think is the ethical gold standard that we want things to be but they're doing it. They've moved forward. They're starting to talk about the people in their supply chains. They're starting to talk about the impact on the environment. And that's really impressive. So whilst sometimes um, we can get very upset with these different systems, I think actually the fact that there are so many shows that the general argument that companies should care about their supply chains and have some responsibility for them is something we should celebrate. We have something called the New Green Claims Code. Has anyone heard of the New Green Claims Code? Ooh, I'm having a few nods. That's good. Um, so this is something that the Competition and Markets Authority... God, I'm so nerdy. This is something that the Competition and Markets Authority released last year, and it's really important. What it means now is that companies in the UK are not allowed to make false claims about their sustainability credentials. If they do, or if you assume anyone is, you can contact and go to the new Green Claims Code and report them, and then they will be investigated. At the beginning of this year, the Competition and Markets Authority, using this, have started an investigation into the clothing industry as a whole, as something that is particularly bad on this angle. What's very special about the Green Claims Code is that it also... Have I gone really over? Got 15 minutes left? Okay, thanks. My brain, sorry. Um, 
is that you're also not allowed to omit information in this Green Claims Code. So that's really a new thing. What that means is that Shell's adverts about how much they invest in renewable energy, whilst being factually correct, omit and deliberately cast aside the, um, the huge amount more they're investing in fossil fuels. And that is also not allowed according to this new Green Claims Code. So this is an incredible piece of, well, it's not legislation, but code from the Competition and Markets Authority. The thing I'm excited about next is this other long, complicated thing called human rights and environmental due diligence. <laughs> and uh, this is being looked at in the EU at the moment, um, and they are thinking about incorporating that. And what this is, is something that fair trade campaigners have been asking for for a very long time, which is actually that fair trade is voluntary. People can choose whether they buy fair trade or not. People can choose how they treat people when they buy products. And we normally focus on consumers and say, consumers, please buy fair trade. But actually, it shouldn't be a choice that you can buy these different products. And so human rights and environmental due diligence is about making companies responsible for their whole supply chains wherever they are. And these are a variety of things that I think we can be hopeful for and celebrate and excited about. We're going to move on to a Welsh lesson now. Uh, my colleague Caden is going to come up to teach us all some Welsh. I'm going to start by saying goodbye. So, uh, and then and then Caden will take over. So this word is hoil vower. We've got the lovely pronunciations underneath. If you uh, don't don't quite understand, so let's see if we can all say it. Hoil vower. Fabulous, that's great. And the reason I'm starting with goodbye, not just because I'm going to head off now, is that Hoilvauer means bye. When you learn Welsh, it's one of the first things you learn. But actually, it comes, the direct translation of Hoilvauer, goodbye, is big fun. Big fun. I'm wishing you big fun for your future. And it comes traditionally from a word meaning sale. And this is the official definition in the Geiriadir Cymraeg, which is the Oxford English Dictionary of Welsh. And um, I love this description of what just saying goodbye means. It means unction. It means gusto. It means the tune of a musical instrument. Um, it means the sing-song cadence much in vogue in the Welsh pulpit. It means all these sorts of things, which is fabulous and wishing big fun. And so it's, we're in a lovely bubble this weekend, and when we go away, we're going to be not in a lovely bubble again, or we might be, you know, I hope we all have lovely bubbles wherever we're going. Um, but when we say goodbye, I want us all to wish hoil vower to each other. I want us to wish big fun and successful progress. Um, in the future that we move on to. So I'm going to say, that's the end of me blathering on, Dioch, and now I'm going to hand over to Caden, who is going to come up. Hi, Shamai. Um, I'm Caden, and I'm the Communities and Communications Officer at Fairtrade Wales. And for those you have spoken to so far, you are interested in learning some Welsh words. So that's what I'm going to do today. So we're going to start with Shamai, which is hi or hello. And I hope you've all had your coffee this morning and ready to, to join in. Um, so yes, show my is hi, and it can also be, you know, how are you, um, how are you doing? So, yeah, should we give it a go together? Uh, so show my, show my, great, great. You're uh, already better than I thought. <laughs> and um, in response to that, then, so if someone's asking how you are, um, I'm hoping we're all good today. So this is the only one I'm going to teach you <laughs> in response. Um, so Yawn is fine, well, I'm okay. And then Dioch is thank you. So let's, let's break it down, let's, let's try Yawn first. So I'd say Shomai. And we'll chuck the Dioch in then at the end. So Shomai. Amazing, well. 
And yeah, you've, you've probably seen this word quite a lot. If you drove into Wales, you'll see on the signs um, coming into Wales as well. So that's Croeso, which is welcome. And you can see in the top, Croeso, Gymru, welcome to Wales. So let's give that, let's give that one a go. Croeso? Croeso. And then, yeah, a very important one for us all here, <laughs> Masnach Deg, which I guess is getting harder now. It, it does progressively get harder throughout this lesson today. <laughs> um, so fair trade is Masnach Deg. The Deg is fair and Masnach is trade. So let's, let's give that one a go. Masnach Deg. Perfect. And then Dween Hoffi is I like. So Dween is I, and then Hoffi likes. So we'll give Dween Hoffi. I feel like you might know where this is going. <laughs> Dween Hoffi Masnach Dig. <laughs> I like fair trade. Dween Hoffi Masnach Dig. Let's, let's give it a go. Dween Hoffi Masnach Dig. Perfect. I'm going to have to get someone else up here in a minute to take over, I think. And then these are various things um, that are all fair trade, or can be fair trade. And yeah, let's, if, if you can look at one and try and memorize your, your favorite thing that's there. Um, a lot of the top ones are quite easy, so coffee is coffee, tea is tea, and then bananas is bananas. Uh, <laughs> Chocolate is chocolate, and sugar is sugar. So those ones are relatively easy. And then getting to the bottom ones, we've got craft eye, which is crafts, and then blood eye, which is flowers, and then gemwife, jewelry, and lastly there, dillad is clothes. So if um, after three, if everyone can just shout out their, their favorite <laughs> one from there, um, so three, two, one. Yeah. Great. I didn't didn't get any of those, but <laughs> so we'll we'll put these together then. So remember the word that you just had. We'll go back quickly so you can see it again. So then we're just going to say Dween Hoffi, whatever product it was, Masnachtig. So um, Dween Hoffi, Blodai Masnachtig, or Dween Hoffi, Chocolate Masnachtig. And so yeah, if you all remember which one of those you liked, and yeah, give it a go. So, doing coffee, sachtig, perfect. Diane, <laughs> well done. Yeah, that was great. And um, I think I think that's all from me. So uh, yeah, if you want to learn any more Welsh, come and find me later today. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.